Good morning everyone. Um, I hope you're having a lovely Sunday. Sorry that I can't be with you. I'm actually down in Norwich, but hopefully you'll enjoy the rest of the service. Um, I've got Rick here with me this morning um, and I'm going to grill him about the finances and the giving. I hope that's okay, Rick. Well, good morning from me too. And uh, yes, it is. I'm slightly nervous about these flames behind. I don't know when they come out, but um, now I'm very happy to be grilled. That's fine. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. We'll get straight stuck in. Um, can we see as a church family a simple breakdown of where all of our giving goes to? So, for example, do we spend 10% on staff? Do we spend 5% on the biscuits? Where does all the money go? I think the first thing I want to say, Georgina, is the thought of 5% on biscuits. We might all be fighting, uh, fighting fit. No, not quite. Um, no, really good question. And the answer is, yes, there is a very easy place to find out. Uh, you probably know I'm going to say this. Wonderful little booklet called Gratitude and Grace, which the whole church family uh, are encouraged to have a look at and read. There's a page in that which explains it really clearly. But I'll run through it really, really swiftly. We spend 47% of our budget simply on gospel ministry in terms of the people who teach and preach, the clergy and the church. We spend 20% on our youth ministry and paying for our youth worker. We spend 20% on our building, so the parish centre and the youth the hall. We spend 9% on admin and kind of office stuff, 2% on evangelism and 2% on worship. That's how it breaks down. I hasten to add, actually, of course, some of what clergy do is related to evangelism and worship as well. So that may sound a bit small to some, but hopefully quite a lot of that goes towards good worship and evangelism. That's really helpful. So definitely yeah. go grab one of those booklets. Grab one of those, that'd yeah. be great, yeah. So one of the biggest amounts that we give to is to the Common Fund. Yeah. And um, for those that don't know what that is, what is the Common Fund? Well, the Common Fund is that 47% we talked about for costs of clergy, for vicar, curates, etc. Um, and the reason is, it's a kind of lovely system which I think is quite biblical in its, in its ethos. The idea is of stronger supporting weaker Christians. Um, and the way it happens is, across a whole diocese of Sheffield, across South Yorkshire, whatever community you're in, you give towards the Common Fund. And then the diocese try and really fairly divide that out to make sure that we don't just have vicars in the posh parts of Sheffield, if I can put it bluntly like that, but instead that we all share and that clergy are put in poorer parishes as well. So if you like, not all the money goes to your Broom Hills, some of them go to your Parson Cross, and do you follow me? And so um, it feels like a really kind of godly way of doing it actually to make sure ministry happens elsewhere. Uh, and that's what that really big chunk goes towards. So ministry here in Chapel Town and contributing a little bit to ministry elsewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. And out of that amount that we pay for the Common Fund, does that kind of just fund the, the like you and the, the staff yeah. at St John's and St Saviour's, or do we support some of those other churches as well? We are a little bit, yes. I mean, when you put together the amount that St Saviour's and St John's give, it covers a little bit more than just one clergy person. Yeah, it does do that. But we're deliberately trying to resource ministry elsewhere. That's mm -hmm. what it's about. And Jesus actually, you know, it's Jesus teaching that we should pay for some to be set aside to, to pay uh, to to preach the gospel and make Jesus known. And so we're trying to honour that. Yeah. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you. So, could we look at cutting back the money that we pay for the common fund? Um, well, um, in practical terms, we, we have a tiny little bit for 2024 because what we've decided to do is to keep our giving to the diocese on exactly the same level, which of course because of inflation means that they'll effectively get any less good things from us because of that. We've done that partly because now we are sharing a minister with High Green. It seemed to make sense to say, well, when we put the two together, what is that funding? And when you put the two together, um, it feels like we can give for one clergy person plus a bit more, and that's, that's how we're doing it. That's really helpful, thank you. Um, so obviously we're still living in a cost of living crisis. Yes. Um, times are quite difficult for, for some people still. Yeah. Um, so when all of that is still going on, why are we asking people to increase their giving? Yeah, I guess the first thing I want to say is we really understand that the PCC lot took some time in prayer and thought about this, that for some folks, perhaps hearing this message, it'll be really difficult because they'll think I'm as stretched as I possibly can be. And I think I want to say loud and clear, if that's you, then please, uh, you need to cover your own living expenses. You need to cover for your immediate family. Jesus was really clear. The Apostle Paul is really clear. And there's at least a couple of places in the Bible where it's really clear that our, our, the needs of our family must come first. The basic needs of family to be cared for and housed and clothed and all that stuff has to come first. 
But after that, the question is, what can I do to bless others? And that's really the question. And the, the difficulty is we're all in such different places on that, aren't we? And so if you look in 2 Corinthians, again, where Paul writes to the Corinthian church, he's really keen to stress that it's all giving is a proportionate thing and it depends on how much we've got. Some of us haven't got a lot to spare. Others of us, honestly, possibly have. have. And, and for us, the challenge, I guess, is to say, well, if I'm actually financially stronger, as it were, how can I support those who are financially weaker? And the truth is we know ever since COVID, some folks actually flourished financially during COVID. Some still are flourishing even today. Um, folks on a pension have the triple lock, which means their pension is actually being protected in one way. Some folks in employment have had pay rises like you know, the clergy, although probably not an inflationary pay rise, but something. And so I'm asking honestly, yeah, I probably need to look at some kind of increase in my own giving, even though our bills, yes, have certainly gone up, the vicarage is, yeah, anyway. Um, but I think I want to say it's a Christian principle to say, what can I give? And if I am living with, you know, luxuries in life and I've actually got beyond the basics, then I probably can afford to increase my giving. And I guess I'm asking myself that and trying to lay that challenge before us all, really. Um, Christians are very, very different. It's really interesting, some biblical examples of those who even when they're really struggling have been able to give generously and we'll be coming back to one I think a bit later. Yeah. 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 So what if you like what if someone here is listening and they're one of those people that can actually only afford to give a really, really small amount? Absolutely. Um, and there will be some, absolutely some of us. And uh, Jesus just thinks that's amazing. Not that you can only give a little amount, but whatever you give. Um, we know that because there's a very powerful story in the Gospels, which of course we'll be coming back to later in the service today. If you go to Luke's Gospel, chapter 21, Jesus is in the temple and he sees a very poor lady, a widow, who just puts some, some just a very few coins in her giving to God and to the temple. Um, and he just praises her and says, that is amazing. And so we know that Jesus looks at the heart and what our giving represents. It doesn't matter if the actual figure is quite small. The question is, what does it represent of what I'm giving to the Lord, and he's really blessed, even by those who can only give a small amount, when that really represents a very generous offering. Mm. Yeah. That's really helpful, thank you. Um, so, slightly different tone of question. Um, some people would argue that we might have spent some money on some items last year that were, un that were unnecessary. Okay. Um, for example, we got a load of new music equipment last year. Yeah. Um, so one of the questions that we had was, how do I know my money is going to go to something better this year? And is there kind of a difference in our spending between those things that are essential and those things that are desirable? Again, a brilliant question. Perhaps the first thing to say is, uh, it's really important to say that it is not the vicar and the treasurer who decides how our money is used, it's the church council, which means we have to bring figures and proposals and it is scrutinised, all our spending is scrutinised. That particular expenditure was very carefully scrutinised because it was a large amount, it was several thousand pounds uh, for new speakers uh, and for a new mixer desk and various other equipment. Um, so what we did was, first of all, we made sure that we got the very cheapest within the range. We also looked not just at what's essential and what's desirable, but what's long-term and what's short-term. Because we all know in our own personal finances, you can buy something cheap now and then you've got to replace it just a month or two down the line. We didn't want to do that. So the PCC looked really carefully at that um, and prayerfully and thoughtfully decided, actually, no, this is a, a good use of, of the money. Uh, we were also very blessed because some of that was paid for out of a generous legacy and some of it was paid for from a grant we'd received towards worship. And I guess the final thing to say for that particular expenditure, I would really want to push back if anybody felt it was unnecessary because our Sunday worship and the quality of sound, people need to hear both the spoken word and the sung word. And also part of the reason we have good speakers is for some years we've had complaints about the sound quality of the Newton Hall, so we're really working on that. And we do use it as well for our evangelism. So the sound stuff is used down when we have carols in the pub and when we go out into the community for open airs and things. So we felt actually you know, worship and evangelism and the saints being able to hear worship on a Sunday is actually a pretty big priority. That, that's really helpful, thank you. Um, and then, so how is giving handled within the church? So mm -hmm. by that I mean, is it one of those things that everyone on the PCC knows how much you give? Do the vicar and the treasurer both know, or is that just kept just to the treasurer? Okay, 
Um, well, thank you, yes. Um, again, we're trying to follow God's word on this. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 8, Paul says about financial giving, that it's right. we need to do what's right in the eyes of the Lord and in the eyes of people. So we need to be very accountable. Um, and so we try and do what's absolutely right. Only the treasurer knows what any particular individual in the church gives, and they keep that absolutely confidential. Um, I never know, and that's really, really important. Sometimes folks do say, Rick, can I take that? No, no, I say no. And there's two reasons behind that, really. One is I need to be able, before God, to bring what I understand to be God's word to his people. And that means I don't need to be afraid of saying hard things sometimes, challenging things, for fear that somebody might think, oh, I'm not gonna give that much anymore, or whatever. Um, I need to just be honest as to what I believe Christ is saying to his people. The other thing is, the other danger might be that I might be manipulative in some way. If I knew particular people, and I might try and, you know, and that would be totally wrong as well. So I, I know nothing, as it were, in terms of the figures. All I want to try and do is simply say, Friends, this is what I believe God's word is teaching us. That's really helpful, thank you. And the last question I've got for you. Um, so why do we give our money to other charities when we as a charity are needing a little bit more money ourselves this year? That's, a, that's really important to ask. Uh, so here's, I hope, an answer. The first thing to say is we don't actually give that much. It's 2% of our budget. It goes towards not just charities, but what we call mission partners. So folks who are doing gospel ministry, often in places much tougher than we are, and across the world, and we want to kind of be a blessing to them. Some churches give as much as 10% of their whole budget away to other Christian ministries. We haven't done that for some years because we just haven't been able to afford to. So we've been trying to be really, really careful. But I guess the other thing I want to say is, it depends what you think Christian giving is about. Um, I think it can sometimes be easy to think it's a bit like paying our taxes. And everybody knows you try and pay as little as tax as possible um, because we're slightly suspicious of central institutions and we kind of feel like we need as much as we can get. Um, the great thing is when we follow Jesus, our hearts get changed and we find actually when it comes to giving to the gospel and to the church, it's really different. Because what has happened is we found out Jesus gave his life for us. We found out we have a heavenly father who looks after us and gives abundantly. And we are being prepared for a wonderful life to come where we will have riches beyond our imagining. A, a wonderful new heavens and a new earth and life with Christ. And so anything we lose now, it's nothing. Mm. It's peanuts compared with what is to come. And we just trust God will provide as we give generously. And particularly when you have been so blessed by somebody else and you've seen your own need, I kind of look at folks around me and I think those who need physical help, but most of all, need to know eternal life. Actually, me reigning a bit on my living expenses and giving to others is nothing compared with all that. And um, so God's grace, I think, changes us and we just want others to taste that grace as well. And so what does it say in the Bible? God loves a cheerful giver. So I'm trying to learn to be cheerful myself and I want to encourage us as a church to be those who are cheerful. That was really helpful. Thank you so much, Rick. That was that was all of the grilling. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. No, I think I'm not too singed from all that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Virginia. Thank you. Thank you. And if anyone has any questions, any other questions, can they come and ask you at the end of the service? They certainly can. Um, if it's anything to do with the exact figures, please speak to Andy Mumford. I'm not a figures person at all, but I'm very happy to chat about principles or just any questions folks have got. I'm only too happy to. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.